energy grid. So, um, so the, the energy grid uh, needs to be reliable. Nobody doubts that. But what most people don't think about when they think about the electrical grid is that the infra electrical infrastructure in many places is very old. Some parts of it are about 130 years old from when electrical grids were first introduced into the world. And New York City's grid uh, is the oldest power system in the world. Uh, it dates from 1880, uh, 1882. Uh, I've actually seen cables, uh, cable records with installation dates of 1889 dating from the time of Thomas Edison. And in fact, my group computed that over 5% of Manhattan's low voltage cable was before 1930. So I, I should say that many of these cables are still functioning reliably. But not only is the energy grid old, it's also very large. It was uh, installed gradually over the last 130 years. And um, Con Edison, uh, New York City's power company, they operate not only the world's oldest power system, but also the world's largest underground electrical system. And in Manhattan, there's almost enough electrical cable underground to go around the world. Um, and if you consider all of the boroughs of New York City, you can go around Energy's Grid 2030 document where they outline our national vision for electricity. And the first major finding in the executive summary section of the document is that America's electric system, the supreme engineering achievement of the 20th century, is aging, inefficient, and congested, and incapable of meeting our future energy needs. But uh, it's not that easy just to convert to a smarter grid, right? The, uh, the electrical grid is, is really, really large. And even if we replace equipment now to convert to a smarter grid, uh, in a few years that equipment's going to be old and it's going to need to be replaced. So these reliability problems are going to be there for the foreseeable future. Now, a lot of power companies have started doing uh, proactive maintenance where they use historical records of past failures and do the maintenance work before the failure happens. Now, uh, in the past, power companies used mainly reactive maintenance, where if there was a problem, they would go and fix it. But that all changed in 2004, after a tragic event in New York City where um, a Columbia student fell on an electrified manhole cover. And after that event, a lot of power companies changed the way they do things, and they started these proactive uh, maintenance programs where they, they do inspections. So the uh, access points to the underground electrical grid are holes in the ground, they're called manholes. And the goal of all of these new maintenance and inspection programs is to prevent electrical shocks or what they call manhole events, which are fires and explosions and smoking manholes. And uh, these events are almost always due to the insulation breakdown on the, the low voltage cable that's within the manholes. And if we were able to predict these events more accurately, it would have an impact on public safety, reliability of electrical service, and it could save the cost of repairing the damage caused by an underground event. Now, our part in all of this is to rank the manholes in order of vulnerability to serious events. Now, we have data from all over the company, uh, from various departments within Con Edison. So we have data about the, the manholes themselves. We know what type of manhole it is, whether it's a manhole or service box. We know what type of cover it has, whether it's a vented cover that allows gases to escape or a solid metallic cover that doesn't. Um, we have electrical cable data. We know every cable along all of the streets and avenues in the city. Um, we know what type of cable they are. We know what eight, when they were installed, um, what the insulation type, the conductor type. We have inspections data from since the inspection program started, the new inspection program starting in 2004, and event data. Now, the event data is our most important data because we're predicting events. And that data comes from Con Edison trouble tickets. We have almost 150,000 Con Edison trouble tickets. And so the, so the idea is that when someone experiences low voltage or flickering lights, they call up a Con Edison dispatcher who starts typing in a ticket while they're directing the action. So this is a sample of one of these tickets, and uh, I, I'm going to read it for you just to give you a sense of it. Uh, so this is an AC burnout. So most of the time, AC burnouts are not serious, but occasionally they can be. And the ticket says, uh, CIB Powers, whoever that is, reports contractor working in service box 158622 in front of 135 West 4th Street, has seven wire coppered at the west duct. And that means that there is an electrical cable that's melted itself onto the duct between the manholes. 
And then they dispatched Manhattan District Engineer O'Hara, and then he arrives. And then he reports in that service box that there is a seven-wire main in trouble blowing out the west wall, unable to tell if it goes west or south in the crossing as per the MS plate. And that means he's looking at a, uh, the main room service plate, which is a little map of a three-block region. And he can't figure out where this cable that's melted um, onto the duct, where it's going. And there could be a few different reasons for that. So one reason is that, um, so the, the, the cables are supposed to be in these nice tidy racks along the walls of the manhole, um, like this one. This is this nice tidy racks of cables. But occasionally, well often, the cables can come out of the racks and they kind of end up kind of looking um, like spaghetti. Uh, but there could be another reason why he can't figure out where the cable goes, and it's because sometimes the manhole is full of all kinds of gunk, and they need to call in a flush track to stick in a big tube, suck up all the gunk, and so the guy can get in there and see what's going on. So he calls in a flush truck, flush required, ordered, and then it was still working. He cut for replacement three 40 DC cables, four 40 AC cables, so these are old electrical cables. And then there's some parking information. And then he cleared some burnout. And he writes that the manhole needs a cut and wrap, which means the cables need to be made parallel along the walls of the manhole. So these are our most important data. These are our event data. And we're trying to predict events. Okay, so this is very difficult data to work with. But we're data miners. We don't want to be the kind of data miners that are afraid of data. So um, I want to give you a little history of the emergency control systems ticket system. So it's a 1970 system. It was used fully from 1986 onwards. Uh, the, the Con Edison uh, engineers we work with still call them B tickets because they were written on carbon paper, carbon copy, and the B copy was the one that was filed. And it was only in 2007 that we started working with Con Edison to uh, use these documents for prediction. That's when our collaboration started, 2007. Now, trouble tickets are not unique to the power grid. They arise in all kinds of uh, maintenance problems, customer service centers, airline maintenance, building services, military. They're written quickly with lousy grammar and spelling. They contain lots of extraneous information. It's a lot of telegraphic language, uh, misspellings, a um, lot of technical jargon, non-standard everything. And uh, this, is, this is at least 38 variations of service box, which is an important term for us. And here uh, are all different ways that the word barricaded is written. So these are the kinds of problems that make it difficult to take these data and uh, process the information and, and, and put it in a database and process. So I want to show you uh, just a snapshot of our, uh, the, this is the type of, these are the types of extractions that we do from these tickets in a semi-automatic way. This is a semi-automatic information extraction that's uh, kind of sophisticated. So we pull out things like smoking light leak, so the manhole was smoking light leak. Um, that indicates a serious event. Service box numbers, burnouts cleared, indicating work was performed, that there really was an event there. Uh, we pull out cable sizes, things like blown out, uh, that, that kind of stuff. And then this is uh, just a snapshot of the generalized architecture for text engineering, which is our platform that we use for uh, processing these, these tickets. So this is the general knowledge discovery process we've developed for extracting information um, from these data. So we take all of the raw tables from all of these different departments at Con Edison, the cables from the accounting department, um, all, all, all of this data, and we process it very heavily. So the tickets themselves get geocoded. They have addresses on them, and so we de, uh, deconedify the address information and send it to a geocoding service and then try to figure out from there what, what the uh, GPS coordinate of the location is. And then we do the meta ex metadata extraction from the ticket that I just showed you. The, uh, the integration is actually very challenging. The cable data is particularly difficult to work with. This is the stuff that dates from you know, the 1880s. Um, and it's very difficult to integrate the cables with the, with the manholes. But then uh, all of it gets uh, nicely cleaned up and put into this nice clean database on the Columbia servers. And then we mine the heck out of it using machine learning algorithms. And the idea is to produce a ranked list of manholes ordered from most vulnerable to least vulnerable. And then the list is evaluated in several different ways. And then the process goes back to the beginning where we adjust our initial uh, data processing. So let me tell you about the, uh, the ranking uh, part of all this. So we're producing ranked lists. 
and we're, we're using techniques from supervised ranking, or it's also called learning to rank. Now, learning to rank methodology is a, it's a subfield of machine learning. It developed in the information retrieval community. Uh, they use it for web search, so Microsoft Bing, for instance, has learning to rank technology in it. But this is one of the very first applications of learning to rank outside of uh, information retrieval. Uh, so we've developed uh, new algorithms for learning to rank. And the idea with learning to rank is this. If you're trying to produce a good quality rank list, how do you evaluate that list? Well, you use a rank statistic. So the idea is to optimize rank statistics. It's the algorithm optimizes the thing you care about, which is a rank statistic. And so we've developed uh, 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 rank, st rank statistics and uh, learning algorithms for this problem of manhole event prediction. And they focus on the very top of the rank list where the most vulnerable manholes are. That's the part you want to get really accurate. And the performance guarantees on this are, are theoretical uh, probabilistic guarantees on performance. They're statistical learning theoretic guarantees. They involve things like covering numbers uh, to assess um, the size of a, uh, a, the complexity of a set of functions. Now, in terms of using these models, we've developed about 200 factors for the predictive model. They're, they include features of the manhole's history of past events. What events was this manhole involved in? How many events? What type of events? How serious were they? Uh, how far in the past were they? Was the manhole the trouble hole for the event, or was the event simply nearby the manhole, or was it somehow involved in the event? Uh, features of the manhole's cables. How many cables does it have? How old are those cables? What type of cables are they? Are they streetlight cables, main cables, service cables? What is the insulation type? What is the conductor type? Uh, features of the inspection history. Was it inspected? When was it inspected? Uh, were the inspections clean? We also have features for the structure type. Is it a manhole or service box? What kind of cover does it have? Does it have a solid metallic cover or a new vented cover, which allows gases to escape? And we have 52,000 manholes in Manhattan, 63,000 in Brooklyn, and 27,000 in the Bronx. Now, uh, we are trying to predict events. So how do, we, how do we figure out, you know, we're trying to predict serious events. How do we know whether a serious event occurred? Well, we have to look in the trouble tickets. So the, the trouble tickets, uh, to, to do that, we have to classify the tickets into, uh, well, we use three categories. Was this a serious event? Was this a not serious but potential precursor event? Or is this ticket not representing an event and we need to uh, remove it? So when we started this project, you know, we, we couldn't really read these trouble tickets. So what we did was uh, an inter annotator agreement study where we gave Con Edison engineers a pile of tickets to label for us. And we asked them, just tell us, you know, is this a serious event, a, a precursor event, or is it not an event? And so they, they did that for us, and we were able to understand how well they agreed with each other as well as, you know, understanding how to, how to do this. And from there, we developed a, a, cl a classifier uh, for tickets. Right now, we're using support vector machines, but, it, you know, it changes over time. So, uh, so that, that handles the classification of tickets that goes into the, um, the that feeds into the supervised ranking for the uh, features and for the labels for the ranking task. So let me talk about the evaluation of the ranked lists. So the first way we evaluate is through what are called blind tests, where, um, so, so this one is an example of a blind test in the Bronx, where we had data in our database through the middle of 2008, and then Con Edison withheld some data from our database, namely the 2009 data, and they tested to see uh, how well we did on predicting 2009 events. So this is our rank list in the Bronx from most vulnerable to least vulnerable. There are 27,000 manholes in the Bronx. And the domain experts handpicked 18 serious events from 2009, and they checked where on our rank list those 18 serious events uh, were. W where were those 18 manholes? Now, every time there's an arrow here, that's one of those 18 manholes. And X is explosion, and F is fire. And what I want you to notice is that within the top 10% of our rank list, we were able to capture eight out of the 18 manhole events, which means that optimistically, if Con Edison inspected 10% of the manholes, meaning um, you know, 2,700 manholes, which is definitely reasonable, then they could reduce the number of manhole events by at most 44% or eight out of the 18. 
So top 10%, but, but, eight out of, but uh, 44% of the manhole events. But there were some manhole events that we did not predict. That, these ones down at the bottom. Uh, so we ranked them very low, but they had an explosion anyway, or a fire anyway. And we went to our database to try to figure out why we missed those, and there was nothing in our database that would have indicated that these structures were vulnerable. They had just been inspected, they had very few cables, they hadn't been involved in events in the past, and it just means that this prediction problem is not something you can expect to do perfectly. So I'm going to show you the results of something, called we, we, something that we call the case study code that Axenia and I developed, and Con Edison calls it the report card tool because it gives you like a report card for each manhole. It tells you um, everything you need to know to kind of judge the vulnerability of a manhole. So you just type the manhole's name in there, and it produces a report that looks like this. And this is um, a manhole. It's called Service Box 133339. Um, all the names have been changed for the purpose of anonymity. But uh, this, this structure is in Greenwich Village. And um, uh, what I'm showing you first is a list of the trouble tickets that occurred near the, near the manhole. And if there is a star in this column, it means that our manhole was the trouble hole for, um, for, for the event. Okay? And what I want to show you is, oh, and all, all, the, all of these other columns summarize the information within the ticket. That's from our information extraction that I showed you. Okay, so this manhole was involved in, uh, it was the source of the problem for no lights in a building in 2008, uh, side off a bridge in 2008, that's a burnout, another no lights in a building in 2008. There was smoking in 2007, smoking in 2006, uh, burnout in 2004, more events in 2001, wire burning, AC burnout, uh, underground AC in 2000. Um, this manhole has a long history of being involved in past events. It's what we call a hot spot. And um, it has a, so it was involved in 13, it was a trouble hole 13 times, which is a very large number for one manhole. Now it has a solid metallic cover, which means that it doesn't allow gases to escape. It doesn't yet have a new vented cover. This is its inspections information. Um, the inspection, there were two inspections on this structure and neither one of them came back clean. So the first, it needed a level one repair and then both times it needs a level four repair, which is a cut and rack, which means the cables need to be made parallel. And then this is its cable information. And what I want you to notice is that there are cables in it from 1913 to 1930. Uh, and there's also an aluminum cable in it. Okay, so these are all things, everything that I've shown you are good reasons why we would take this structure, give it to Con Edison and say, you know, this is why we think you should instruct, inspect this structure. Okay, so it gives them kind of a whole summary of all of the data processing that went into that prediction. So I want to show you the results of, let's see here, let's see. This is the visualization tool that we built for the project. Um, so you can get kind of a bird's eye view of the, uh, the manholes and uh, you can't see the cables just because of the projector, but they're there, I can see them. And uh, they're colored by vulnerability according to our model. And you don't need to visualize, um, so manholes and cables, you could also visualize the, the trouble tickets instead. And so if you click on a trouble ticket, you can actually read the, um, the report um, from the ticket. So this gives you kind of a bird's eye view of, um, of the information we have in our databases and the, uh, the predictions that we provide. Okay. Okay, so this is, a, uh, this is measuring the treatment effect of the inspections program. So when the inspections program first started, we were able to divide the manholes into a treatment group and a control group, manholes that had been inspected and manholes that hadn't been inspected. And you can see that uh, from their first inspection across the board, uh, this is according to the rank in our rank list, you can see that the treatment reduced the probability of, of an event, or reduced the rate of events um, kind of in each, in each uh, category along the rank list. And we're still assessing the treatment effect of the inspections program. That's, uh, our, that's what we're working on now. Okay, so uh, I, want to, um, I want to mention uh, just one last thing. 
which is that I've discussed so far the project on the secondary electrical grid. This is the low voltage grid with cables that go all along uh, the streets and the avenues. Um, however, this is part of a much larger effort. There are uh, several different projects that uh, are part of this collaboration, this Columbia, Con Edison, MIT collaboration uh, that are in, in many ways similar to the sort of framework that uh, this project has. So uh, we do uh, also, we have a big project on the primary grid where we do real-time prediction of electrical feeder failures, mean time between failure predictions. So I'm just showing you, this is a snapshot of the, uh, the uh, contingency analysis program tool that runs at Con Edison. This is a Con Edison program with one of our, our ranked lists sort of uh, shown, shown there for Con Edison. Um, we also do cable section joint hammerhead and terminator failure predictions. And that's uh, predicting failures on kind of each piece of the, of the primary grid. And that feeds actually into the prediction of, of feeder failures. We also have uh, transformer failure rankings. So this is a, a fairly large collaborative effort. But just within this project, the secondary grid project, um, so I'd like to just summarize what the benefits of that project and give a, a little bit of an overall perspective. So what I've presented is actually a general knowledge discovery process for linking a set of entities to text reports to facilitate ranking. So if you're trying to prioritize a set of objects or set of entities and they are somehow linked to text reports, that's what our knowledge discovery process uh, handles. So it's also useful for things like manufacturing, airlines, advertising, and recommender systems. Another theme of our project is that we're resurrecting data tombs. We're using you know, diverse historical data that's been collected over a century um, for, you know, for, for prediction, for the purpose of prediction. And a lot of companies collect these, this kind of data, but they don't necessarily think about using it for a predictive purpose. So I've, I've presented uh, some predictive and prescriptive analytics, so learning to rank techniques, and then theoretical generalization bounds, new, te new techniques for how to, how to rank a set of objects for the purpose of prediction. Right now we're using Bayesian additive regression trees for propensity scoring for the treatment effect study. Descriptive analytics, I showed you the case study tool that produces report cards of manholes, the visualization tool, and the blind test. I also showed you some of our work on statistical studies, so the inter-annotator agreement study for the trouble ticket and the ongoing uh, treatment effect study. So this is an industry university collaboration with many co-authored papers. It's a long-term collaboration in a large-scale effort to improve power grid reliability, maintenance, cost, and safety. So thank you very much.